The fossil record shows that the average mammalian species, and yes, we are all mammals who, who like to do it like they do it on the Discovery Channel, <clears throat> lasts about a, a million years. We've only been around about uh, 200,000 years, which is roughly as long as this speech will feel. So if our species were, uh, God forbid, um, just one human being, uh, then we'd be around uh, sweet 16, uh, just old enough to start getting into trouble uh, with a member of the royal family. The problem is that we all think the world is, uh, is just for our gratification and our pleasure. Uh, we're all very narcissistic and believe that uh, someone will always clear up our mess, because they have in the past, you know? We have to learn that the world is not some sort of indestructible toy. Uh, God knows I wish those existed. It would have saved me a lot in child support over the years. Now listen, I'm not one of these annoying green people who take a moralistic view of this. You know, you, you, you can save the world and still be a total asshole. That's my solemn promise to you. As the, uh, the, the cookie monster once said, and I, and I quote, a early bird gets the worm, but cookie tastes better than worm, so me sleep in. But um, he was wrong, of course, because we mustn't sleep in, uh, because if we miss the worm of, uh, of net zero, then we'll be left with the cookie of climate change, uh, which, which is uh, worse, although I've made it sound uh, quite tasty. The COVID crisis has shown that we must listen to gloomy scientists. Could have just said scientists. <clears throat> just like I did uh, when, when they told me not to shake hands with patients in the COVID ward, and then I did, and then they, the, 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 well, I got COVID and uh, got very ill, in fact. And I, I feel like I've gone off the point a bit here. I must say something in Greek. Uh, Moussaka. We only have 40 days until COP26, uh, which was coincidentally my score in the game we used to play in Oxford. Uh, how many freshers can you cop off with in a week? Uh, 26. Legend. But no, look, it's, it's very serious. We need to go to Glasgow and make sure that everybody comes back with a smile. The ice caps will melt like the, the ice cubes in your martinis here in New York. Oh, I should have said Manhattans. If we don't act, then, then higher temperatures are going to be baked in uh, like, like, like a cake from the, uh, the Great British Bake Off. Uh, uh, one export from the UK people actually want. <laughs> if we don't act, then our grandchildren will know that we were the culprits. And for me, God knows, that could be a lot of people. Like the great Ronnie O'Sullivan might say, um, who plays snooker, a fantastic game, um, very popular uh, in, in the UK, of course. Um, uh, I'll show you how to play another time. It's a bit like pool. He might say, uh, we don't want to miss our cue. Yeah, because um, it's like a cue, because uh, they play with cues. Like in, uh, put, it's like a stick you hit the balls with, or as the, the Romans might say in their Latin tongue, uh, Lido Pila. <laughs> bit of a slow burn. Not like the planet. <laughs> Zing! <laughs> and as people like to quote from uh, the great works of Greek tragedy, as I, I like to do, um, uh, I'd like to quote from the, the Lego movie, uh, who, who said, uh, if, you, if you remember, everything is awesome. And it's now humanity's solemn choice to decide whether we shall be awesome uh, in, in the Wayne's world, kind of awesome kind of way, or will it be more, oh, someone's done a poo in the bath again. Boris, you dirty boy, clean it up. Uh, sorry, nanny, but I thought you cleaned up after me. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to COP. Welcome to Glasgow, as they like to call it around here, and to Scotland, whose most famous fictional son may be Ur Woolley, the mischievous little boy who gets himself into all sorts of scrapes, which always end badly. We might not all look like Ur Woolley, well, let's fair say that I do, but the tragedy is that this is not a cartoon strip, and the scrapes that we are in are all too real. For centuries, we have been knitting ourselves a blanket of CO2, uh, but not a good blanket, like the kind of blanket you might hide under when your uh, girlfriend's husband comes back unexpectedly, uh, but a bad blanket, like one that someone's knitted so that they can see you hiding under it. I was there in Copenhagen where I told people, as the Mayor of London, that I would encourage them to insulate their homes. And now, just 11 years later, we have protesters saying the very same thing, gluing themselves to the roads. So in many ways, I was, I was ahead of the game. You know? I mean, if only there had been someone in the meantime with some power who could have done something about it. I was there in Paris, where the world agreed that net zero was a good idea. Although at the time, I thought that was something to do with banning fishing. So I was against it, but, but I've, I've come round to it now. And I was in the House of Commons just last month where we cut passenger fuel duty for domestic flights and didn't mention climate change once during the budget. 
So I think it's fair to say that I am doing all that I can. If we don't act, all of these promises will just be no more than blah, blah, blah. Uh, although to be fair, you could replace all of my speech with those words. As we work, let's think about all those billions of beady eyes watching us all around the world. Let's try not to be too embarrassing. I'm mostly talking to you, of course. Uh, that ship has very much sailed for me. And let's think of the unborn. I like to think I've got a few more of those in me. I'm going to finish with a line I always use every time I get married. Yes, it's going to be hard, but yes, we can do it. Hello, everybody, and uh, it's fantastic for me to be here in um, Tyneside. I'm the, um, uh, forgive me, uh, Prime Minister. I know many of you worked very hard to provide masks and gowns and the like. Uh, I want to thank you for that, especially those of you who were Tory party donors and had no experience of making PPE. Uh, you are such an inspiration to me because I didn't have any idea what I was doing either. Who's had their booster? Uh, put, put your hands up. Uh, this audience is a bit, bit too young and thrusting, isn't it? I mean, I'm not young anymore, of course, although still thrusting. <laughs> you know what I mean? We are well placed to get back to normal quicker than any comparator country. Good old herd immunity, which was never the plan. Yes, we're still bumping elbows and wearing masks. I mean, not me, obviously. It's a moral mission. I think as you get older, you get less cynical and more idealistic. Or they should try telling that to my voters. <laughs> Look, electric vehicles or EVs might not have the the, 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 the soft burble of a suckling pig or the or the uh, the, the of the combustion engine or the as you zoom down the motorway or the as you overtake an ambulance or the nino of the police chasing you or the as you shoot out the back window and the um, sorry I've lost my place um. Uh, forgive me, uh, what was I saying? Trains! Uh, we can't just keep carving our way through virgin countryside, although enough about my twenties. <laughs> we need to bring back old lines, uh, upgrade them, do a, um, a reverse beaching, if you will, which is coincidentally the name of my favourite sexual position. We need a green revolution, for which we have set up a ten-point plan. Uh, starting with number five, uh, look at new wallpaper. Number eight, do something about Dom. Uh, number one, um, leak something about Rishi. To the, uh, sorry, no, this is my to-do list. Um, where are we? Oh, ah, ah, okay. Here we are. Uh, number one, champagne. Number two, condoms. No, this is my shopping list. They say people want to work from home. They want to see you next Tuesday. Uh, that's actually something that Carrie says to me sometimes. Oh, I've just worked it out. Yeah. We need to focus on skills, skills, skills. Like, um, how to competently read out a speech. We need fintech, ad tech, green tech, red tech, blue tech, yellow tech, orange tech, purple tech. TikTok tech, 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 tech. <clears throat> Forgive me. Uh, so much tech, it's like we'll be in uh, 15th century Mexico. Did you get it? I'm referencing Tenochtitlan, the 15th century Aztec capital of Mexico. The only explanation for that attempted joke is I was trying to win a bet. Finally, I went to M&M's World on Leicester Square this weekend. Uh, has anyone been? No, you must go. I, I loved it. Uh, very much my kind of establishment because it's inexplicably popular, basically pointless, and ruining a place with a great history. A bit like me. <laughs> uh, and you get to put a picture of yourself on a sweet, and I've always wanted to eat myself. My favourite sweets, of course, M&M's, apart from Peppa Pigs. I mean, Percy Pigs. Peppa Pigs. <sighs> Forgive me. I think I got away with that. Do you like it? it says, just don't. <laughs> That's our new slogan for drugs. Uh, yeah, I got it originally from Carrie. She said to look at it every time I was thinking about having more children. Oh. I told my people we need to get serious about drugs, and they said, well, why don't we deal with structural inequality and try to improve people's working conditions so they feel like they've got more opportunities in life? And I was like, yes, or I could wear a hat. Look, it's been a long time since we had a government who said that drugs are bad. Well, they are. They're really bad. And so expensive these days. We're working on rolling up networks and then putting them in wraps and then smoking those networks or snorting them or injecting them or... Sorry, I've lost my train of thought. The thing is, we know there is a specific group of people who are the issue. Around 300 problem Tory MPs that we have to keep happy, and they all wish they'd lived during a war, so the war on drugs is going to have to do. Crime has actually been coming down over the last two years, as long as you don't consider anything that this government's done is criminal. And if you do, well, that's what our new judicial review bill is for. We're investing millions of pounds in the police to investigate crimes, starting from now. Anything that happened in the past is off the table, especially Christmas parties. We're specifically targeting those middle-class lifestyle drugs users. They're the real problem. No, I think you'll find if you're in the cabinets, you're automatically upper class, unless you're Nadine. We won't just take away their passports and their driving licenses. We'll also ban them from delivery and give them a one-star rating on Uber, so they won't be able to go anywhere or get anything, unless they have a ministerial car. When they arrest a drug dealer, the police are going to go through their phone and send warning messages to all of their clients. 
It reminds me of when I once uh, borrowed Theresa May's phone and, uh, and sent a message saying that she was trapped in a well and needed help to all of her friends. And both of them ignored it. <laughs> Great days. We are investing millions of pounds into policing and absolutely none into the court system. So we'll catch them, keep them for a bit, and then have to send them back. It's a bit like fishing. I wonder if that's why they call it county lines. Okay, are we done? Good evening. Don't get too excited, it's not one of those announcements. I'm not resigning. Yet. And I'm also not announcing another lockdown. Yet. I'm afraid I also don't have time to address the scandal. But what can I say? Hamilton was robbed. I'm here tonight to speak to you with my serious voice, but I still will not brush my hair. Although, let's face it, you wouldn't like it if I brushed it now. <coughs> we delivered the fastest vaccination rollout in Europe, because God knows we needed to. It's only due to the extraordinary efforts of the NHS that we've done so well and only due to the extraordinary efforts of my government that they're still so under-resourced. A fortnight ago, we said we'd offer a booster jab to every adult by the end of January. Well, I'm now moving that up to by the end of tomorrow. And crucially, I won't be telling anyone in the NHS about this until this very moment. So that's an exciting surprise for them on a Sunday evening, isn't it? Uh, I do hope the uh, booking system holds up. There's not much we can do about it now. It's not like this is pre-recorded. We will guarantee that every adult will be offered a booster in the next two days. Uh, children don't count, obviously. If we need more, I'm happy to oblige. Although do bear in mind that I said offered there, just like when uh, Matty Hansbum said we were doing thousands of tests, and by doing, he meant sending in the post. <laughs> I miss that little idiot. On the subject of tests, it's vitally important that everybody takes lateral flow tests as often as possible, which is why we haven't prepared for any sort of massive rush in demand, and we will find there are none available starting from now. But never fear, I'm sure that soon enough we'll get a call from a Tory party donor with some cotton buds and a dream. Some of you might be thinking, but what if this variant is less severe? Isn't this an overreaction? To which I say no, for once I'm actually invoking the precautionary principle, and many of my MPs might vote against me now for doing the right thing after months of doing the wrong thing. Isn't life funny? Not that I'm worried about a leadership contest just yet. Uh, you'd have to be a complete psychopath to want to take over now, so that rules out at least two of the candidates. So, my message is clear. Get boosted now. Get boosted now, like you're a car that's been left unlocked outside the Tory party conference. Get boosted now, like you're the Labour Party's poll numbers every time I say anything. And get boosted now, like you're a chocolate bar filled with caramel, a biscuit and a soft cocoa. S sorry, a little bit hungry. Uh, I didn't get any dinner. Uh, I was too busy finishing off some uh, multiple choice questions. Get boosted now. And once we've done that, I think we'll all deserve a party. Don't you? Too much? Good afternoon. From today, every eligible adult in the United Kingdom will be able to book a booster jab if you can get through the online queuing system. Think of it like trying to get a ticket for Glastonbury, but for an essential medical service. You know, fun. And it's very important that you do because there's a tidal wave of Omicron cascading down the country, a bit like my opinion poll ratings, with over 78 billion cases today, the highest ever figure. Uh, it's actually only uh, 78,000. Oh yes, um, 78,000 cases. Looks like we're doing better than I thought. <laughs> Go us. Things are going so well, but also things are really bad at the moment. And I'm not just talking about my prospects of leading the party into the next election, but we're also seeing signs of hope. Since I announced the Omicron super duper let's get boosted party on Sunday night, the greatest prank pulled on the NHS since Andrew Lansley, thousands of people have been getting jabbed. I want to thank our jabtastic volunteers and our jabalicious doctors as we ramp up to a jabathon, a jabtacular, a full scale jabageddon. We're going to jab Omicron till it's black and blue, then give it both barrels in the face with our jab gun before burying it in a COVID safe coffin made of jabs. Also, we're removing the 15 minute wait time from after your jab so you can go straight from there to a party if it hasn't been cancelled. Chris. So if you look at this slide, you'll see that we're currently dealing with two epidemics, uh, Omicron and stupidity. They're both spread very widely, and at this stage it's not clear which one will win. I know who I've got my money on. Cases of Omicron are rising very fast and doubling every two days, so we are going to break a lot of records. And not just of the number of children born in 10 Downing Street. In fact, if nothing changes, then we could see extremely high case numbers over the next few weeks, uh, maybe even as high as a million. Oh, I don't think we'll get anywhere near a million confirmed cases. We just don't have the testing capacity. What I would say is that you should start to prioritise the events that you really want to go to and deprioritise the ones that you don't. But don't let that stop you going out and enjoying yourselves and spending money, because uh, God knows we won't be giving any more support to the hospitality industry. I mean, for one thing, Rishi's in California and I've uh, lost his number. Or he's not returning my calls, not quite sure which. Right. Yeah, I mean, I'm not saying don't go out and socialise, I'm just saying that I wouldn't if I were you. I don't imagine you're much of a party animal anyway, are you, Chris? I have my moments. I'd like to see that. I hope you never do.
Nicky, I'd just like to add that nobody told me which camera to look at. Looks good to me. Look, are you going to break the golden rule? What? Nothing. What's your reaction to the North Shropshire by-election? Clearly, it was a disappointing result. I totally understand that people are frustrated. Uh, I mean, they elected me to get Brexit done. It turns out that they were the ones who got done. I hear what people are saying. I mean, literally, people often shout at me in the street. In all humility, I have to accept the result. I think I'm probably the most humble man that ever lived. What voters want us to focus on is them and their priorities. I except those voters for whom the priority is getting rid of me. Uh, we are deprioritizing them. People want us to focus on the stuff that matters, like the vaccine rollout and the get boosted now and the scare people about crime and refugees and the economy that's growing the fastest in Europe and don't leave a space here for them to ask if that's just because it's coming from the lowest base. You shouldn't have read that bit out. Basically, what's been going wrong, Sam, is that you, a political reporter, have been focusing on politics and politicians rather than simply regurgitating government press releases about how everything's going so well. So is it any wonder that people are annoyed? Do you accept that you are part of the problem? Look, with all humility and respect due to you, which is rapidly diminishing, those are the sorts of questions about politics and politicians that nobody likes, because when they hear the answers, they just get very, very angry. And nobody wants that, especially at Christmas. Of course I'll get round to fixing it, but that might be a bit tricky because the it is basically me. Listen, Omicron is a serious threat. We've even got the army here helping out. I'm only mentioning that to remind you that there are men with guns nearby that I could order to shoot you. Not that I would, obviously. With all due respect. So what should people do this Christmas? You have to think about your budget of risk. Oh, sorry, Rishi says I'm not allowed to use the B word. We trust in the good sense and the responsibility of the British public because that's worked so well in the past. My final question now, thank God for that. Are you going to resign? What have I just been saying? For fu- I mean, ugh, am I talking to a wall? You've broken the golden rule. Nobody wants to hear questions about politics or politicians or my corruption or my incompetence. People just don't want to hear that. People want to hear songs and jokes and stories. I mean, a political interview never went to number one in the charts, did it? Are you trying to tell me what questions to ask? Finally, you're getting it. Are we done? As coronavirus cases continue to rise, the Prime Minister lets us in on the government's long-term strategy. I mean, basically, it's get boosted and then fingers crossed. And we also asked Boris Johnson where he was over the festive period. Well, I, I mean, I, 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 I was in this country, wasn't I? <laughs> I, I, I definitely didn't go anywhere. <laughs> uh, I mean, and, and, and even if I did go somewhere, I definitely didn't get drunk and then take some nude photos of myself on a hotel balcony. You know? And I definitely didn't send those photos to the cloud and accidentally email my, my password to my, my ex-wife. <laughs> I mean, I definitely didn't do any of that, so I don't even know why you're asking the question. Mr. Speaker, I would like to express my heartfelt, sincere apologies, but I will wait for the results of Sue Gray's inquiry to determine exactly how heartfelt and sincere they are. I know that people are disappointed in me. I understand the rage they feel with me. I mean, believe me, you don't get to be me for this long without understanding that some people hate you. I mean, I've been divorced twice. So far. I mean, come on, Carrie, I've got you the wallpaper you wanted. Surely that's got to be worth something. Although I cannot anticipate the results of the inquiry, uh, I have learned enough to know that there are many things that I regret and things that I wish we had done differently. But enough about Brexit. <laughs> no? Too soon? Okay. Number 10 is a very big department with a big garden, which is basically an extension of the office. Am I endearing myself to you? I mean, look, we've all tried working in the garden, haven't we? <laughs> I mean, we all know how well that goes. <laughs> On that day, I went into the garden to congratulate groups of colleagues for... Um, but how long does it take to drink a pint of champagne? At work speed, probably about 25 minutes. And then I went back into the office and carried on prime ministering after a nap. With hindsight, I can agree that perhaps I should have noticed that I was at a party. Uh, that th there, was, there was a cake, there were party streamers, people were wearing paper hats. But, but in my defence, there was no big banner saying happy birthday Boris and no bowls of cocaine. So it obviously wasn't a good one. We have to wait for the inquiry to determine whether or not it was a gathering, a party, a shindig or a bash. I mean, none of them are allowed at the time, but it's good to get the detail, isn't it? I, I appreciate the point the Right Honourable Gentleman is making, but I would just refer him back to my previous answer, which is that we have to wait for the results of the inquiry from Sue Gray. I mean, she's, she's basically like um, government Google. <laughs> Was there a party? Sue Gray it. Was it allowed? Sue Gray it. Should I resign? Definitely don't Sue Gray it. I renew my contrition. I renew my contrition. I renew my, can I just say ditto? Look, I understand that the Right Honourable Gentleman is actually paid to try and replace me, unlike members of my cabinet who are doing it just for fun, but, but I would just say that we have the fastest vaccine rollout in Europe, the most testy public, and the fastest growing number of apologies from a Prime Minister. So that's the real work that we've been doing. Oh, I love washing machines. Uh, but I would just ask my Honourable Friend to wait for that to be confirmed by Sue Gray. 
The full Sue Gray report, brackets update, brackets first chapter, brackets introduction, brackets to be continued, has been published and placed in the House of Commons Library. Uh, not my copy, obviously, that was heavily annotated, mostly with swear words. I want to say I'm sorry. This pandemic has been hard on everyone. I mean, I had some cracking hangovers. I understand the anger that people feel. I mean, I'm pretty angry myself, mostly about the price of wallpaper, but still. It's not enough to say sorry. We must look at ourselves in the mirror and learn. And as you can tell, I don't often look at myself in the mirror or learn anything. I will accept the recommendations and act. <laughs> now I'm acting sad. Oh, now I'm acting angry. Mm, now I'm acting like I care about anybody else. I have full confidence in the police, especially my good friend Cressida. I mean, that's one dick I'm never getting out. Things have got so bad in 10 Downing Street that I need to be rewarded with a new office of the Prime Minister, an office that will have to be redecorated at the earliest opportunity. Mr Speaker, I know it's important to restore the dignity of number 10. I get it and I will fix it. Just like Jimmy Savile, who the leader of the opposition failed to prosecute, even though that wasn't his decision. You see, dignity. I know what the issue is. It's whether this government can be trusted to deliver. <laughs> Should see your faces. <laughs> you thought I was going to say, like, follow the rules, didn't you? <laughs> no, psych. <laughs> no, I'm going to do one of my pivots. Brexit, free ports, crimes, not the ones I did. Imaginary hospitals, growth, uh, Russia, Brexit, Jeremy Corbyn, Jimmy Savile. Uh, no, I've done him. Vaccines, Brexit, Russia, Brexit. Not breaching COVID regulations wasn't a commitment in our 2019 manifesto. So with the greatest of possible respect, who gives a toss? I, I thank the Honourable Lady for her question, but she'll just have to wait. Not something I often say to a lady and they're not usually honourable. <laughs> Look, I've said we have to wait for the results of the police investigation, then I will decide what gets published from the rest of the report. I'll do a simple find and replace with Prime Minister for totally innocent great guy, and then we're set. It's funny, isn't it, Mr Speaker? I can mislead the House deliberately, but they have to say I'm doing it inadvertently, otherwise you'll kick them out. <laughs> uh, go on, say inadvertent again. Oh, I love it when you speak in that angry Northern voice. It's like they're being told off by the Red Wall. <laughs> now, if you'll excuse me, I have to fly to Ukraine so I can get Putin done. Yes, I signed the program. Well, I didn't read it. It's like those terms and conditions you get when you download an app or a, or a marriage contract. Yeah, I got the gist. I didn't think the EU would want to stick to the rules that we agreed to. I mean, I had my fingers crossed behind my back. I assume they did too. Look, without the program, I wouldn't have got Brexit done or got a big majority. So of course I was going to say it was great. It's a bit like when you're in a taxi late at night and the driver starts telling you his opinions and you don't want to say anything in case he drops you somewhere you don't know. And also because you agree with him. Just today, I met with all of the relevant parties in Northern Ireland. Uh, Sinn Féin, the DUP, the UUP, the SDLP, the PSP, the USB, the KGB, the B Sky B. Not a single one of them likes the protocol as it's currently working, apart from the SDLP, but I think I just made them up. Yes, we were warned about all these potential problems with the protocol, but I just remember all of the warnings came from Ramonas. So all I heard was blah, 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 lefty, liberal, metropolitan elite Islington suit. Hey, just got another fine. I know we can find a clever solution to this problem, and that's why I've put the government's best and brightest legal brains on this. And Suella Braveman. As we've said all along, the EU isn't going to deliberately damage its trading relationship with its nearest partner, just because we've deliberately damaged our trading relationship with our nearest partner. I mean, they're not stupid, and that's their weakness. The problem is that it's leading to more checks, and there's nothing that my voters hate more than checks. And polls, and... Lithuanians. In the end, someone's going to be unhappy, but as long as it isn't me, I don't really mind. The most important thing is there is no border on land or in the sea. Maybe we could have one in the air, or have a sort of mental border, which is actually one of my nicknames at Eton. Now, I agree to the protocol on the basis that it protects the Good Friday Agreement, which I'm a big fan of. It's one of my top five agreements. It's up there with my uh, bearable Christmas Day agreement, uh, which is where I get to see all of my children for just one at a time. I heard that David Davis said that I should go on a diplomatic tour of all of the capitals of Europe. So I challenged him to name all of the capitals of Europe and he got a bit flustered and eventually said that in the name of God I should go F myself. <laughs> uh, we have fun. What can I say? I'm an optimist. I have said all along that we have to wait for Sue Gray to have her say. Now Sue's had her say on Sue Gray Day, which is, hey, today. So I say, hooray. Let's move on. I would like to apologise to anyone who was offended by what happened in Downing Street during the pandemic. Yeah, only the parties, uh, uh, gatherings, uh, work events, obviously. Uh, everything else was great. I want, in all humility, and without mitigating or extenuating anything that Sue said, to provide some context for what Sue said, which should mitigate and extenuate everything.
that Sue said. I am humbled and would like to renew my apology for my birthday party. Because it was rubbish. I mean, if I'd known how much trouble I'd get into for it, I'd have at least asked my ethics advisor if I could borrow her karaoke machine. I take full responsibility for everything that happened. Which basically involves me saying I take full responsibility for everything that happened and then doing nothing. I immediately replaced the senior management team because I've always said that the buck stops just below me. I was appalled to hear of the disrespect and poor treatment of our security and cleaning staff and I have apologised to all of them. I think. It's not like I know any of their names. <laughs> Look, people in Downing Street worked very long hours under very difficult conditions. I mean, sometimes they stay as late as 4pm and occasionally we ran out of wine. Leaving parties are vital to the running of any organisation. Many times the happiest I've ever seen a staff member is at their leaving party. And I think that says a lot. When I attended these events, they were not against the law. It was only when I left that things got a little bit crazy. <laughs> Which I'm trying not to take as a personal insult. <laughs> I mean, in the end, what are we all doing here? You know I'm not going anywhere. I know I'm not going anywhere. Half of my MPs can barely write their own name, let alone a letter to Graham Brady. You're stuck with me, and I'm stuck with you. Now, if you'll excuse me, I've got a war to fight. And once I've dealt with Liz and Rishi, I'll get stuck into Putin. Yes, it's true we've had some bad results in these by-elections. In fact, I haven't been so disappointed by a result since Carrie's last pregnancy test. As a government, I have to listen to what people are saying, because I am the government. Would we really have a government without me? Worth having? Look, people are saying that they're worried about the cost of living crisis, that I'm awful, that they want us to cut taxes, and I think it's important that we listen to at least two thirds of their concerns. I don't want to minimise these results, but it has to be said that governments always lose elections in the mid-term. Uh, and in the greater scheme of things, when you look at these results, they're actually rather small. And I say that without minimising them. I think what most voters are thinking is, look, we got through COVID, OK? We got all of the big calls right. Uh, I'm extremely handsome and capable. Uh, sorry, did I say that's what voters were thinking? That's actually what I'm thinking. <laughs> look, these by-elections are simply the result of a perfect storm. A terrible prime minister, terrible policies, terrible cabinet, and terrible candidates. Plus inflation. There have been a lot of distractions, you know, unhelpful stories about parties in Downing Street, etc. And the thing is, if nobody had heard about these parties, nobody would have cared. I'm not blaming the media. I'm just saying that if you only reported the things that we wanted you to, everyone would be happier. I mean, think about it. Did people enjoy hearing about those parties? No. Many people got very angry and upset. So why tell them? You know, ignorance is bliss. You know, just ask Nadine. Or Dominic. Or Suella. Well, you get the idea. What I really need now is a strong chief of staff, like, well, I don't know, my wife. Oh, maybe that's against the ministerial code. Just give me a sec. Not anymore. Yes, this country is going through a difficult patch. We are forecast to have the lowest growth in the G20 apart from Russia. But to be fair, we are both fighting a war in Ukraine. I think it's very kind of Oliver Dowden to resign and take responsibility for these results because that is the one thing we kept hearing over and over again on the doorstep of Tiverton and Honiton and Wakefield. You know, Get rid of Oliver Dowden, they cried, once we'd explained who he was. Just because I'm here in Rwanda doesn't mean I'm trying to avoid the issue. But on the other hand, we have just paid them £120 million. Uh, I wonder if there's some way I could apply for a sort of platinum asylum. Why so serious? Good afternoon. Uh, it is clearly the will of the Parliamentary Conservative Party uh, that for some reason they want a new leader, uh, and therefore a new Prime Minister. I can't think why. They've got a perfectly serviceable one right here, but uh, I guess, uh, you know, shit happens. I've agreed that the process of selecting a new leader should begin soon and end sometime after I've been Prime Minister longer than Theresa May. I want to say something to the people who voted for us in 2019. Some people who voted Conservative for the first and let's face it, last time. Thank you. Thank you for giving me personally, and only me, an incredible mandate, which I've absolutely loved having. Cheers. It's been a blast. I'm immensely proud of all of the stuff that I always say at these things, uh, getting Covid and Brexit so done that they're really still causing massive problems, uh, something out of date about vaccines, and of course being the only person in the world to stand up against Putin. Let me just say to the people of Ukraine, once this mess is all over, finally, I'll be able to go and fight on the front lines over there in Kyiv. And do you know what? The Ruskies won't know what hit them. 
I'm very proud of just how much we've talked about investing in skills and infrastructure whilst actually cancelling projects left, right and centre. Because if I have one insight into human beings watching you as I do from my superior perch, it's that genius and talent and imagination and enthusiasm are evenly distributed throughout the population, if not in my cabinet. At this point, I'd just like to apportion more credit to myself. I nearly got you there, didn't I? I've tried to persuade my colleagues that it would be absolutely stark, raving bonkers to change leader at a time of crisis, but, you know, the, the herd instinct is powerful. And I'm not suggesting there that all of the Tory party are cows, but that's only because I would rather use a different word beginning with C. To the new leader, whoever he or she may be, I'd just like to say that I will be giving you as much support as I can be bothered to. A few of you are probably relieved, happy, delirious. A lot of you are going to be drunker tonight than a Downing Street staffer during lockdown. But I, I think a few more of you might be disappointed, and not just Nadine. I want you to know just how sad I am that I'll be giving up the best job in the world. But then's the breaks. Win some, you lose some. Can't win them all. <laughs> in vino veritas. Tarama salata. Now I'd just like to thank a list of people, like I've just won an Oscar and not been forced out of office because of a lack of integrity, including my family, those I know, uh, and of course those I don't. So I know that at this point what you all want me to say is that I'm going to resign myself to a further period in office as Prime Minister, because being Prime Minister is the greatest education that I've ever had. So suck on that, Eton and Oxford. I've travelled the length and breadth of this fine country. I've been to England, Scotland, the other ones, and I've slept with so many fascinating people. People willing to solve old problems in new ways, which is very much the reverse of my approach, which is solving new problems in old ways, which is very much why all of those new problems have not been solved. Finally, I want you all to know that whatever happens, however dark things may seem, that I am going to be fine. Thank you very much. Oh, and Michael, you're fired again. Hasta la vista, baby!